for the reason for which it was created. Sin is now because of the fact of our heart we overindulge. We do things like flaunt our wealth. Abuse it. We abuse it. Self-centered, self-indulgent, compassionless, consumption. <clears throat> it's the sinful attitude of the heart. But here's the good news for us. We're not of the world anymore. So guess what we have now living within us in our new hearts? The Holy Spirit who can then what? Help us use the world correctly. That, uh, let me show you a little passage. This just came to me. I'm not sure how that passage reads. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And hang with me just a minute because I didn't have this in my note. It just flashed through my mind. And, um, oh yeah, 1 Corinthians 7, verse 29. Now, Paul has spent 28 verses talking about the problems of marriage. <laughs> when did marriage problems begin? In the beginning? <laughs> In the beginning? Well, the <laughs> actually, after the fall. Oh, after the <laughs> because Adam, right before the fall, said, bone of my bone, I mean, Hallmark greeting card, right? bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. I'm going to call you my woman. You were taken from my rib after the fall. The woman you gave me, she's the one who messed all this up. <laughs> Blame game already. <laughs> I mean, that was immediate, wasn't it? It just, just almost started. They tried to hide from me. I mean, this, this was a husband and wife. They were naked. They were naked before. They had had sex. Okay, they were to replenish the earth, right? All those things were good. But the first thing they want to do is try to dress themselves. See, sin wants to make you hide. And here's a beautiful shadow. Were they able to hide their shame? <laughs> they went and took some fig leaves, or as the Geneva Bible says, they made for themselves from leaves britches. <laughs> you know, so they, that was known as the britches Bible. And they put these fig leaves on, and that didn't work. But they were trying, they were trying to hide it themselves, weren't they? And uh, they just had a sense of, I can't be vulnerable. I can't open up to you. I can't be, be, be naked in my heart, soul, and mind to you. I'm one flesh with you, but hey, you know, we need to put a little barrier between us. And sin's what caused that. So after Paul has to deal with the fallout of these problems now after hundreds of years, here's what he says. But I say, brethren, the time has been shortened. You know, time's short. So that from now on, those who have wives should be as though they have none. Time's coming, they ain't going to have to worry about this marriage thing. And those who weep as though they did not weep, and he says, and those who rejoice as though they did not rejoice, and those who buy as though they did not possess, and those who use the world as though they did not make full use of it. For the form of this world is passing away. Talks about the abuse of the world. So he says, the time will come for those of us who are regenerate that have used the world without abusing the world. Because, see, sin makes you abuse the world, makes you use it for something that you shouldn't. And, and so we can give him thanks and be obedient and be generous with others with the things of which we have. So it is from him that we have the ability to get rich. Now that differs among people. Remember God controls every human life and every human destiny. The people who are millionaires are not millionaires because they've got good old Yankee know-how. Because God blessed them with it. Even the evil people with it? Yep. yep. I'm where I'm at economically because guess what? God put me where I'm at economically. He has those who have less than I do, those who have more than I do. And, and, and he doles out the capacities just like he doles out the spiritual gifts as he sees fit. So we all don't have the same to the same degree. But you know, it's just like when I go to Belize. Listen, Fidel told me, he said, one thing about us, he says, we will never really be hungry. And he took me around, he showed me all the things that were in the jungles that they ate. You know, he says, so we will not starve. It can get hard 
But I mean, we eat the root of this tree, we eat the plant in the spring up there on the blooms. Over here, we take this for our stomach. We, you know, and, and, and have two growing seasons if there's not a drought or something like that. There's still weeds and thistles that come about from time to time, but for the most part, you know, they have uh, what they need. Uh, but everything we have, yeah, but everything we have is a vapor. And uh, he even allows the wicked to, to prosper. So since the cre creation continues uh, a, a, and gives us this wealth, he meant for us to use it. So the creation is still going on. And he means for us to enjoy it, but to enjoy it scripturally and rightly and with a heart. It's all a foretaste to heaven. Only us who are Christians can, can, can see this and do this because we'll get messed up if you think in a sinful kind of way. To resent wealth or to think that you have to take a vow of poverty is to show the wrong attitude of heart. God has put on display his greatness, his generosity, enjoy it. So don't knock yourself if you drive a nice car. Don't knock yourself if you go home to a nice bed tonight, okay? That's not in and of itself wrong. Uh, I'll give you some examples. John, uh, Genesis chapter 8. You know when the first thing that Noah did after he gets off the ark? He builds an altar. You know what he does? He barbecues some animals. And they eat them. God had provided that there would be some that he didn't take in pairs. Because if he had, they would have been an extinct species at that moment. So we actually had some that wasn't in pairs. And so that was for what? Noah's enjoyment and he was very thankful for it he 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 he, he uh, fixed it and then he tells us that this meat was given to man all mankind he said that which I've given you for to eat eat it Genesis 9 he blessed Noah and told him to go forth and be fruitful so even as the world started back over after its destruction by water same principle that we saw back over in Genesis, chapter 1. It's the same thing. Uh, Job 28. You can read. We won't read all of it. But in Job 28, God is telling Job about mining. Okay? He tells him about uh, mining silver and gold uh, and the things that are there. Look at verse 1. Surely there is a mine for silver in a place where they refine gold. Iron is taken from the dust and copper is smelted from the rocks. You see that? These are all things God put there for man to do and they were doing it back in Job's day. They had mining going on. So our proper response, response to our riches if we're regenerate, is this. We give God thanks. We glorify God. We serve Him because of gratitude. Okay? We serve Him because of gratitude. Use it to help others because it prevents people from becoming selfish. I've got more than what I need. I'm going to send some money to those people in Kenya. You're welcome to join in if you wish. Okay. Why? Because I've got enough. I can send a little bit. And he said nothing too little would not be turned down. You know, I mean, so that's, that, that's an opportunity for me to help relieve the need of someone who has less than what I have. How can I then? Now, here's where the sin would come in. Well, I'm sitting on $4,000 in the bank, but I never know when I might need that. I might need that tomorrow. Well, I don't know if I'll be here tomorrow. I know somebody needs it now. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So there's ways to, to think about this. Uh, when we got over into Deuteronomy, we've already talked about this, but remember the tithe and the festival tax and all the money that God told them to have? The festival tax is a good one because you know what God had them doing? Four, or three or four times a year, they had huge festivals. All Israel would go to Jerusalem, bring their tithe in, and then they would feast, right? You know what their you know what their favorite feast was? 
Passover had the most religious significance. But you know what the favorite feast was? The Feast of Tabernacles. You know why the Feast of Tabernacles was so favorite? It was done at the end of the growing season and all the grain and wine and everything had been taken in. And so it was a, just a big, they, they built their little, it's called tabernacles because they, 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 even the people who lived in Jerusalem didn't stay in their house. They went outside and built booths and they put leaves over it. So it's like staying in the wilderness. And, and then they would bring in their, their food and everybody would bring extra with them. And it would be like a, I remember when I went to Spain, I happened to go to, was it Madrid? I can't remember. Anyway, we were there during in the Festival of the Follas. Now, the Spaniards love their festivals. Barcelona. Too. Okay, Barcelona, I think that's where it was. And it had, had the, 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 the Festival of the Follas. And listen, this town of a million, this city of a million, I was in the middle of it, had four million people show up for that weekend. You walk, I mean, if, I'd, if it went on very long, I'd have weighed 7,000 pounds by the time I came back. Because when you walk down the street here was all these street foods, you know, they're big sausages hanging. And I'm sitting there. <laughs> and, 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 you know, they had breads and cheeses and wines. I mean, it was just everywhere. And uh, uh, everybody's in a good mood, good mood yeah. and, and all that stuff. I went in. It has a religious connotation to it because what they would do, every neighborhood in the city built out uh, built a statue of some sort they had some like of the queen and some of whatever and then they went around and judged which neighborhood built the best one then you burned them I got to watch them burn the one on my street and when they burned it up I mean it, it, I mean it's like watching somebody burn the Mona Lisa I mean these things were that good but that was supposed to be a purifying act uh, but but it was it, it was really neat, very festive occasion, the running of the bulls in Pamplonia. That's right. You know that I would love to go to that. Not that I want to run with a bull, but I would like to watch other people get chased by a bull. Uh, that would be fun. Uh, but but the same thing. That's what they were kind of doing back here in those days, and and God in the midst of all of them having all this grain. Do you remember He made provisions for the poor? What did He tell them about gleaning their fields? leave the corners right for the strangers among you and then do you remember the little tithe that came every three years what was it mainly for for the poor and the orphans and the widows you know so God made provisions from your surplus guys for those who did not have now the only thing that would prevent us from doing that would be a heart that doesn't see that See, that's why I said you got to start first within the heart. Take it, eat it, be satisfied. And uh, that's one of the things he did. And, and, and in Deuteronomy 8, he even gives them a warning. He says, make sure that you, 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 you don't get so concerned with your wealth that you fail to glorify him because of it. He says, uh, when he told them if they didn't help these people, he said, you'll forget me. So sin is not in the possession of the money. Sin is in the forgetting from whence the money came or your grain or whatever. If we forget God, we will think we acquired all we have. And that will make us very, very selfish. Look at Deuteronomy 8. little minion has struck again <laughs> always moving the books of my Bible around <laughs> comes in and doesn't put it where he want, where I think it ought to be Deuteronomy 8 verse 7 he says for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land they ain't there yet he says, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs flowing forth in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of 
olive oil, and honey, a land where you will eat food without scarcity. He's doing this, and they're sinners. He says, in which you will not lack anything, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills you can dig copper. There's mining again. And when you have eaten and are satisfied, you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. There's the end, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But beware. That you do not forget the Lord your God. God by not keeping his commandments and his ordinances and his statutes which I am commanding you. Otherwise, when you have eaten and are satisfied and have built good... Man, does he know America or what? <laughs> Otherwise, when you have eaten and are satisfied and have built good houses and lived in them, and when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and gold multiply and all that you have multiplies, you would think that when these results start coming in like this, everybody just be so thankful and so gracious, right? Has the opposite effect. He says, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Verse 18, he says, But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He. Now, as you go home and you think about where you're going, the car you're riding in as you head home, when you take those clothes off tonight to put on your pajamas, think about where they come from. And I don't mean Sears or wherever you went and bought them. <laughs> he says, But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who is giving you power to make wealth. How thankful are you for what you got? I mean, I, you know, I'll be honest, I've lived a very comfortable life all my life. I can't say I know what want is. I really don't know. Never been where I didn't know where my next meal was coming from. Never knew where I was going to lay. I've never been where I didn't know where I was going to lay my head down. Never had that. Have you? He says, It is he who has given you power to make wealth, that he may confirm his covenant which he swore to you, your fathers, as it is this day. And you know what they did? After all of this that they received, after all of this warning, guess what they did? They forgot God. They forgot God. Uh, doesn't mean that you're all going to be a millionaire. Doesn't mean that you're all going to be a genius either. Okay? Uh, but we can enjoy what God's given. What I'm trying to tell you is it's not wrong for you to possess. What's wrong is how you view your possessions. Okay? Not all are equal, but we strive to help those who are not equal with us. All true riches, all of our true riches are still in heaven because these others we're going to leave here. It's all about our heart attitude. Look at Amos. The minion's really going to hide this one out. Oh, he didn't. The minion turned me right to it here. <laughs> or the angel turned me right to it. The minion always tries to hide it. In, in Amos 5 and verse 11... This is what he says about when you don't pay attention to the poor. He says, Therefore, because you impose heavy rent on the poor and exact a tribute of grain from them, though you have built houses of well-hewn stone, yet you will not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you're not going to drink their wine. For I know your transgressions, and many are many, and your sins are great. You know what he just told them? Though you've got all this stuff, I'm going to take away your power to enjoy it. Truly selfish people can't enjoy what they have, can they? A miser can't enjoy the riches they got because they're too worried about losing the riches that they have. In one sense, a miser is as poor as a poor man. The poor man doesn't have to use, and the miser has but will not use, so what's the end result? The same. So God smites these people's wealth. All because of the oppression of the poor. All because they didn't care for others. And 
It's, it, it, and again, it's not the riches that's the problem. It's the fact that God gave them this and they did not. So when we talk about acquiring money, okay, it has to be with first an attitude from where it comes from and why it was given to you. And not just money, but possessions as a whole. And with that having been said, you get money through your work. You can receive money by means of a gift. Right? People give people money. And you can receive money by investments. People often ask, is it wrong to invest money for a return later? No. Not wrong at all. And uh, the Bible even talks about that in many places. Uh, people confuse that with gambling. You know, it's, uh, it's different. No. You're, you're, you've got a product that's being if, if I invest in your company okay I mean I'm, I'm investing in your company and you're making a product and selling if it makes money then I'm making money right okay if I go to a lottery tell you what am I investing in yeah <laughs> you know, I'm investing in me right yeah. or having more money so people can <laughs> want more money uh in Matthew 25, the unprofitable servant. Why was he in trouble? Remember that you had the different talent guys? First one got his ten talents, and he went out and made ten talents more. Was that not an investment? He said, so not only do I have what you gave me, I've got more. There's another one who didn't have as much, but he invested it and made double. And then finally, the one little talent man didn't do nothing with it. He buried it. <laughs> and so once he once he buried it, he didn't have anything which he could do with it. So what we find is is that Jesus told him, He said, It would be good for you to have at least lent it out and for usury. You know, and at least it had some interest even though getting interest wasn't biblical, but Jesus was using an illustration from the world. You're not even as sharp as the world is. And that was why he threw him into outer darkness. God wants you to make sure that you have more than you need, and the way you ensure that you have more than you need is have the right attitude toward what you have. Does this make sense? That's the un undergirding. So don't feel bad because you drive a nice car, you sleep in a nice warm bed, but feel bad if somebody needs help and you don't help them. <laughs> you know, that's, that, 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 that makes yourself very selfish. So, all right, let's go to our Father in prayer and ask him to seal this in our heart. Father, thank you so much for the diet. Thank you for this teaching. We pray that this might be our attitude. We thank you for all the things that you have given unto us that we might have plenty and that we might use what we have for the glory of your name and be thankful because you have given us a great life here on this earth. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen.